Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for another franchise ranking video today and a rather short franchise ranking as well because today I'm going to be ranking the movies which star another actor who plays James Bond and this time it's for the actor Timothy Dalton and as you may or may not know, he's only played Bond twice. So this, so like I said, this is probably going to be the shortest ranking video I've ever done on my channel and so... Now, this is a ranking of both of his movies from best to weakest, in my opinion, because, in my opinion, he starred in two really good movies, and, and I don't think either of them were, were terrible or anything like that. I just think one of them is weaker than the other one, so yeah, that's my opinion. So, this is my ranking from best to weakest, in my personal opinion, so if you guys don't agree with me, that's absolutely fine, but please respect my opinion just like I respect yours. Okay, so starting with what is is my favourite Timothy Dalton Bond movie out of the two. One that I definitely really love, and it's one of my favourite Bond movies of all time, which I think is also underrated as well, which, of course, is none other than 1989's Licence to Kill, which is Timothy Dalton's second, and unfortunately, his last Bond movie. So, yeah, now, I love Licence to Kill. I think it's a very awesome movie, in my opinion, and what's great about it, Timothy Dalton does a great performance as Bond in this movie, like he did before. I think it was better than this movie, and it's a shame this was his last movie as Bond, because he played Bond really well, in my opinion, and and I, and I, and I, I regard him, I think, as my uh, my fifth favourite behind, of course, Sean Connery, Daniel Craig, Roger Moore, and Pierce Brosnan. I think he does a great job in the role, in my opinion, and and this movie, he definitely gave a great performance, and what I also love about this movie is I love how this film was actually pretty dark because, as you guys can see by my DVD, um, it's rated 15, and rightfully so, because this film definitely goes really dark, and I think it's definitely a very good change for, for a franchise to, to do something different and go darker. And what's great about it is um, is a film also has other great supporting characters. I definitely love Robert Davey as the villain, Fran Sanchez, who is, of course, the most powerful drug lord in Latin America. And he gave a great performance as him, and I think it's probably my second favorite role of his behind um, behind Jake Bratelli in The Goonies. And um, he, he gave a great performance, in my opinion, as as Fran Sanchez. And I did also as well like Talisa Soto as Lupe Lamora, who is Sanchez's girlfriend. And this is probably my second favorite role of hers behind Kitana in Mortal Kombat 1995. And I thought she gave a great performance in this movie. And I also as well loved um, several of uh, Fran Sanchez's henchmen, for example. One particular one that I do love is probably Dario, who is played by Benicio Del Toro, which is pretty cool. And he gave a great performance as his, his henchman. And and I, when it comes to other, other swan characters or allies with Bond, I definitely liked uh, Robert Brown as M. Um, may he rest in peace. I thought he was very good as M. All of my favourite M of all time is Bernard Lee. I thought Robert Brown gave a great performance in this movie and... I also as well like Caroline Bliss as Miss Moneypenny. I thought she was very good, although, of course, my favourite is Lois Maxwell. And I, of course, definitely love the legendary Desmond Lurin, may rest in peace, as Q in this movie. I thought he was great as, as Bond's ally who supplies Bond with gadgets, and no one, no one in my, my opinion can play Q better than Desmond. To me, he's the best Q there is. And this one also has really great stunts as well, which are definitely really great and really fun to watch. And you know how I said this movie is dark, guys? Well, I definitely think Dario's death is definitely an example because he, cause he, cause he gets pulled into a shredder. So, yeah. That's definitely, of course, an example of where, where this film definitely goes really dark for a franchise. So, yeah. I like how this film, unlike other sequels in the in history of movies, you know, actually did something different for a change. And, yeah. That's what I love about License to Kill. I think it's a great movie. I also love the music, which, which was composed by Michael Carmen. May he rest in peace. And... This was also the fifth and final Bond film directed by John Glenn. I thought he did a great job with his final Bond movie he directed. And so when it comes to bad qualities, um, the only one I can think of is probably that it was a big shame that this movie bombed uh, about Cobbs and flopped. It's, it's a big shame that it flopped because it's unfortunate that Timothy Dalton could not reprise his role in a third Bond movie as Bond, which was a massive shame. And... But thankfully, Gold and I did save a franchise in 1995 with Pierce Brosnan's movie, his first movie as Bond. So, yeah. 
It's a big shame this film bond because I would love to see more of Timothy Dalton as Bond because I think he does a great job as Bond. I would love to see more of him and and it's also a shame this film bond because I prefer this over 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 Timothy Dalton's first movie as well. And it's one of my favourite Bond movies of all time actually as well. So yeah. Um so it's a big shame this movie bombed because I love License to Kill. So if I was to give this movie a score out of 10, guys, I'll probably give it a very solid score of 9 out of 10. Because I think it's a definitely a really awesome movie, in my opinion. And definitely a lot of fun. So, yeah, the only bad qualities that come to mind is, that, is, is of course, that um, it, it didn't do well at the box office, which resulted in Tim, it also not being able to play Bond again. And we didn't get another Bond movie until Golden Eye 995. And I guess maybe the pacing could have also, was also a bit slow sometimes as well in the movie, but I can let it slide because I still think the movie is really fun and, and awesome to watch and underrated, in my opinion, it deserves more love. So, yeah. So that's License to Kill, guys. I'd give it a solid score of 9 out of 10. And then on to my second favourite out of Timothy Dalton's Bond movies, out of the only two he's been in. I'm going to go on what is obviously going to be his first movie, which of course is none other than 1987's The Living Daylight. So once again, I think it's a very good movie in my opinion, but personally, I do like License to Kill better. I think that movie was done a lot better. This was directed by John Glenn. Who would later go on to direct, of course, License to Kill. And so I thought this film was definitely really good, in my opinion. Really good. And um, so there's, there's many, you know, great things about this movie. And um, so Timothy Dalton gives a great performance as Bond in this. And there's great sporting characters, played but work very well by their actors and actresses, like Maryam Darbo as Cat. Our Milovi, John Dutt on Baker as Brad Whitaker. And and also as well, I'll, um, I definitely love the addition as well of John Reese Davis as General Leonid Pushkin, which was a different great addition because he's a great actor. And I'm on many others too. And um, this was also the first one to feature um, Robert Brown as M and Caroline Bliss as Miss Moneypenny. She replaced Lois Maxwell and... And I thought she was better in License to Kill, in my opinion, compared to this film. But that's what I'll say. And especially, it was also pretty sad to see no, Lost Mark will no long, longer play in Miss Moneypenny as well, which was definitely a big shame, really, indeed. Yeah. I mean, Lois, rest in peace. Because um, Lois' final appearance, I think, was at A View to a Kill, wasn't it? So, yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, she didn't return anymore. So, yeah. And... And uh, Caroline Bliss did well, though, in her first appearance as Miss Moneypenny. And, and of course, Desmond was once again the legend that he is playing in this movie as the quartermaster of MI6. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a legend. And, and in my opinion, the best out of the Q actors. In my opinion, he's the best Q of all time. So, yeah. And so this movie is, is definitely great. It has great action and... I definitely love the music, which is composed by John Barry, who, who, who of course, is responsible for giving us the, the iconic theme song you know, from, from the start of the franchise with Doctor No. And, yeah, and it's pretty good that he composed the music, may he rest in peace. And definitely think, you know, that was definitely a nice addition to a movie. And the action scenes are definitely really fun to watch as well. And it's because of action scenes in both these films, but I'm disappointed that we, we didn't get any more films with Timothy Dalton as James Bond because I think he he deserved to have another movie, in my opinion. Because I think he does a great job as Bond, for what it's worth. So, yeah. and But nonetheless, what I'm talking about Living Daylights is great. All about quarters I could say is that I feel maybe the pacing was also a bit slower than, than License to Kill's pacing, in my opinion, which was a bit of a shame, really. Um, but... I thought it was still a good film, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed the Living Daylights, what it was worth, and, and like I said, guys, it's, it's, it's still, in my opinion, a massive shame that Timothy Dalton and second film bombed up, um, so yeah. Um, but License to Kill, in my opinion, is better than this movie in many areas, you know, I think it has better action and stuff like that, and uh, I, I also think it has slightly better pacing as well, so yeah. Um... But nonetheless, well, I still think Living Daylights is definitely a good movie, in my opinion, and another example of an underrated Bond movie. So, if I was to give it a score out of 10, I would probably give it a very solid score of 8 out of 10. That's what I'd give it. So, guys, that's me doing my ranking of both of Timothy Dalton's Bond movies. So, yeah, like I said, it's a pretty short ranking, isn't it? So, yeah. So, in first place is my favourite, which is License to Kill, and my second favourite, of course, is Living Daylights. So, yeah, both, 
good films in my opinion but this one in my opinion is better slightly in my opinion but this one is still good so yeah anyway guys so that's me doing my ranking of timothy dalton's james bond movies from best to weakest out of only two of them um so you know drill guys be sure to give this video a like also be sure to let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think of timothy dalton james bond films how you guys would rank them best to weakest or worst in your opinion in the comments below to see you guys would rank them and stay tuned next week because I'll, be, I'll be posting in a brief review for george laserby's only film in franchise so stay tuned for that one so yeah and um, if you would like to be a member, you can press on if you're using a PC or a laptop or you can link a little description. And if you want to remember me, the name's Prime, Lucumus Prime.